First scientist of Nepal, Gihendra Samshar Jangabadur Rana. Gihendra Samshar Jangabadur Rana earned the title of Nepal's inaugural scientist due to his pioneering efforts in introducing scientific knowledge to the nation. Notably, he was the trailblazer who introduced the concept of scientific laboratory in Nepal, marking a significant milestone. His endeavors played a vital role in the modernization of Nepal and ushered the country in a new era of progress. Gendra Samsha Jangabadur Rana was born in the year 1928 Bikram Sambat during the month of Paus in Calcutta, which was then the former capital of India. His father, Bir Samsha Jangabadur Rana, held a diplomatic post as a Nepalese representative in the city. Gendra Samsha's initial education was conducted within the confines of his home, where he received tutelage from a private English instructor. Subsequently, he embarked on a more structured educational journey by enrolling in Darwar High School. The school established during the Rana regime is historically significant as Nepal's first modern educational institution. During his time there, Gain Rasamsa's talents and abilities became evident to all. His proficiency in various domains, including creativity, eloquence, music and sports, left a lasting impression on those around him. Upon his father Veer Samsha's ascension to the position of Prime Minister in the year 1942 Bikram Sambat, Gehendra Samsha was appointed as the head of the arms division of Nepali army despite his young age. This opportunity provided him with a valuable chance to explore the world of armament. From his early years, Gehendra Samsha exhibited a keen interest in crafting mechanical devices and weaponry. In a manner reminiscent of renowned global scientists, he was driven to innovate and create novel items rather than merely appreciating the work of others. Recognizing this inclination, Bir Samsher, during his tenure as the Prime Minister, entrusted his 14-year-old son, Gehendra Samsher, with the leadership of arms department within the Royal Nepalese Army. This decision sparked Gehendra's deep enthusiasm for the design and production of weapons and munitions. He made good use of this opportunity and made many contributions in the field of arms and weapons of Nepal. At that time, arms and ammunition could not be imported from foreign countries. So the scientist Gehendra Samsher started making various weapons using locally available raw materials. For this, he built a British-style arms manufacturing factory in his residence, Seto Darbar in Jamal, Kathmandu, and in Sundarijal, Balazu, and Bhospur. Instead of importing equipment and weapons from abroad, he used to manufacture them here using local resources. He made many inventions like Nepal's first miniature hydroelectric power plant, water-powered rice-pounding mill, wind-powered water-pulling motor. Gehendra Samsher was the eldest son of third Rana Prime Minister Bir Samsher. Bir Samsher was married to the daughter of Prince Upendra. Bir Samsher kept his elder wife under house arrest because he did not love him. Gendra Samsher made his father happy by making scientific progress. This made his father happy and he asked his son what he wanted. In this opportunity, Gendra Samsher asked the freedom of his mother. Following the demise of Prime Minister Bir Samsher, Dev Samsher assumed the rule of the fourth Rana Prime Minister. During this period, Dev Samsher and Gendra Samsher shared a strong and cordial bond, fostering a close relationship. As a result, Gehendra held a prominent and influential position within the court. In addition to his courtly standing, Gehendra Samsher was appointed as the head of Espinar's division within the police service. Subsequently, upon the counsel of entreaty of Prime Minister Dave Samsher, he embarked on a journey to Japan. The purpose of this expedition was to gain insight into diverse techniques associated with arms manufacturing. Upon his return from Japan towards the conclusion of 1956 victim Sambat, Gendra Samsher procured a motor car from the renowned Ford Motor Company in Detroit, United States. Displaying his innate curiosity and determination, he meticulously dismantled each component of the vehicle, dedicating himself to the thorough study of its mechanics. Inspired by this endeavor, he embarked on a journey of crafting an automobile from scratch. To further his understanding, Gendra Samsher imported a car manufactured by the Ford company from Britain. He meticulously dissected every segment of the vehicle, 
methodically examining and comprehending its in creative workings. Subsequently, he diligently resembled each part, effectively reconstructing the entire automobile. This fervent pursuit culminated in his successful creation of an automobile. An emblem of his accomplishment, Kendra Samser graciously presented a self-made car to reigning monarch at the time, King Prithvi Vikram Saha. This gesture showcased not only his technical prowess but also his esteem for the monarchy. Gendra Samsher demonstrated his innovative prowess by designing a cannon that could be fired from a seated position. This unique creation was named Gagon, derived from the initial letter of his own name, Gehendra. Its distinct attributed lay its minimal recoil upon firing, a marked departure from the vigorous backward movement characteristics of other cannons. An ingenious safety measure was incorporated to the cell the operator from potential harm. A metal plate was affixed to the front of the cannon, offering protection against any inadvertent backfire. This design ensured that the user's safety was prioritized. Additionally, the gay gun featured an essential advancement. Its firing mechanism allowed for rotation by a few degrees. In 1953, Kendra Samsher also made another double cannon. He combined it with the name of his father, Beer Samsher, and gave it the name Beer Gun. It could be fired successfully from both its cannon. It was also designed so that it could be fired by turning a few degrees. He again invented a new model of cannon and named it Deer Top after his grandfather Deer Samsar. During an era when electricity was not widely accessible in Nepal, Gehendra Samsar displayed remarkable ingenuity by devising a method to illuminate lights underwater. His innovation involved harnessing the power of DC dynamo. Through this process, he harvested the electricity generated by the dynamo to charge a battery. Subsequently, he connected the power line from the battery to illuminate an electric lamp. Notably, this lamp was capable of emitting light even underwater. Historians regard this accomplishment as a significant strike, especially considering that the availability of dynamos during that period was not as widespread as it is today. Gehendra Samsar's achievement in successfully illuminating an electric lamp underwater stands as a testament to his forward-thinking approach. Moreover, his contribution extended to the inception of Nepal's first farping hydroelectrical project, highlighting his pivotal role in advancing the development of electrical infrastructure within the country. In the past, the building that housed the Examination Control Office of Trivan University in Jamal Kathmandu along with the encompassing palace, was referred to as Seto Darbar. This palace was given to Gehendra Samsar by his father, Beer Samsar, as a part of the ancestral inheritance. Within the premises of Seto Darbar, Gehendra Samsar introduced a mill that served a multifunctional purpose. This mill was utilized for activities such as rice dressing, floor grinding, and mustard grinding. To facilitate these tasks, he incorporated seven powerful broiler engines into the setup, enhancing the efficiency and capabilities of the mill. Genra Samsar's contribution extended to the establishment of a leather processing factory in Balaju, located in Kathmandu. This innovative venture enabled the domestic processing of raw leather, reducing the need of reliance on external sources. Regarded as a pivotal milestone, this factory marked a significant step in Nepal's industrial progress. Recognizing the importance of self-sufficiency, he also took the initiative to set up factories dedicated to producing essential equipments for the military. Shifting away from dependence on imports, he harnessed the coal resources present in Dan. Gehendra Samsher ingeniously employed wind power to operate a mill that extracted water from wells. By harnessing the energy of the wind to rotate the fan, he effectively utilized the otherwise untapped wind resources for the betterment of society. This innovative approach extended to the irrigation of the gardens within the Seto Darbar compound. Through this method, he facilitated the extraction of well water to irrigate the gardens by harnessing wind energy. This dual purpose application showcased his inventive thinking, transforming wind energy from an idle force to a beneficial resource for both milling and irrigation within the palace grounds. 
Gehendra Samsa was a versatile individual, proficient in a multitude of disciplines. He displayed keen interest and received training in diverse areas, including music, sports, painting, and even photography. His notable contribution extended to the realm of photography, a nascent technology in Nepal during his time. Engaging in this innovative pursuit, he invested his personal resources to procure the necessary chemicals for photography from foreign resources. He utilized these materials to explore and advance the field of photography. Through his efforts, he not only adopted and mastered this new technology, but also created an extensive collection of photographs, thus leaving an indelible mark on the domain of photography in Nepal. During the Dasai festival on the year 1963 became Sambat, Gyanra Samsar visited the Seto Darwar to exhibit a pistol he had drafted to the then Prime Minister Chandra Samsar. In an unfortunate turn of events, the pistol accidentally slipped from Gyanra Samsar's pocket as he bowed down in reverence to Chandra Samsar. Regrettably, the unexpected occurrence startled Chandra Samsar, inadvertently leading to the emergence of a conspiracy against Gyanra Samsar. This incident played a role in generating suspicion and subsequent action that would shape the course of events in political landscape. While paying his respect to Chandra Samsar, the pistol inadvertently slipped from Gendra Samsar's possession and landed on the ground. This incident stirred a significant commotion and various interpretations have surfaced regarding the event. First Interpretation it is speculated that Gehenra Samsar concealed the weapon with an intention to harm Chandra Samsar during the Dasai festival and the pistol accidentally fell from his pocket due to the lapse of attention. Second interpretation, some suggest that Gehenra Samsar had prepared the mentioned pistol as a gift for Prime Minister Chandra Samsar, but it dropped while he was transporting it. Third interpretation, Gehenra Samsar was known to carry a pistol for his personal safety and the same pistol fell during the encounter. This version poses that he neither possessed the intent nor the courage to harm Chandra Samsar. In a swift turn of events, Chandra Samsar pursued Dev Samsar to Dhankuta overnight, leading to his assumption to the position of Prime Ministership. It's worth noting that Gyanra Samsar held a deep reverence for Dev Samsar, considering him almost like a deity. This sentiment of Gyanra Samsar had an impact on Chandra Samsar as well, contributing to a sense of apprehension on his part. On the fort of Vadra in the year 1964 Bikram Sambat, Gendra Rana made his tragic end due to a conspiracy involving poison wine. During a fateful evening while enjoying a drink with his companions, Gendra Rana consumed a boiled egg and suddenly began to choke. Tragically, he succumbed to this incident later on. There are speculations that the egg might have been poisoned under the orders of Chandra Samsar. This marked the conclusion of the journey of Nepal's first scientist. During that period, suspicions arose that Chandra Samsar, who felt threatened by Gehendra Samsar's popularity, might have been involved in his demise. The strong bone between Dave Samsar and Gehendra Samsar potentially made Chandra Samsar perceive Gehendra as an impediment to his own ambition. The incident involved the falling pistol further fuels speculation that Chandra Samsar could have played a role in Gendra Samsar's death. However, to this day, the true nature of the circumstances surrounding his death remains shrouded in mystery and has not been definitely disclosed. Various accounts have circulated regarding Gendra Samsar's untimely demise, often attributing to a conspiracy by Chandra Samsar. However, new information has emerged indicating that Rudra Samsar, Gendra Samsar's stepbrother, communicated to his family that his death resulted from a brain injury. On the night of Gendra Samsar's passing, both brothers were engaged in a drinking session. Rudra Samsar sought permission to depart and left Gendra Samsar company to return home in a buggy. Upon arriving home, Rudra Samsar received the shocking news of Gendra Samsar's demise. He conveyed that the sudden cause of the date was attributed to a brain stroke. This revelation underscores the complexity surrounding Gendra Samsar's death and the diversity of perspective regarding its true nature, leaving an enduring mystery. As a result, the achievements of the young scientist, whose life was tragically cut short at the age of 35, have been conserved in the National Museum in Chaun. This ensures that Gendra Samsar's numerous contributions are preserved for posterity. 
Despite his relatively brief life, his legacy endures, immortalizing him as a revered scientist who made significant discoveries. Thank you.